particularly on irrigation, both center pivot and wheel line irrigation, everywhere that they are growing these, these crops. Uh, he is also a well-noted seed stock breeder of both Red Angus and Black Angus cattle and has national exposure with their ranching and farming operation. This just gives you an idea of the type of country that we were doing these trials in. So, you know, it truly is big sky country when you go out there. Uh, you know, just absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, if you like to trout fish, this is one of the very best areas in the world for trout fishing. Now, in our alfalfa trials in 2011, we looked at three different treatments. We used a half gallon per acre of Sumagro compared to a gallon per acre of Sumagro. And then our control was their typical application of a fish hydrosylate fertilizer with kelp called DRAM. And that's a product that many farmers and ranchers typically use as a fertilization product out in that part of the country. Okay, if we look at our alfalfa, we find that we had, first of all, we had two replicates, and we had anywhere from a 27% to a 47% dry matter yield increase where we incorporated the microbes compared to our control fertilization program. Now, we also did some alfalfa trials in Nebraska, in north central Nebraska, located near Plainview, with a substantial farmer there. He's both a rancher and a farmer, and we looked at three different treatments. We had 1.5 gallons per acre total of Sumagro applied throughout the season, with a half gallon per acre applied at green up, and then followed by a half gallon per acre after each cutting. The second treatment was three gallons per acre of a foliar feed fertilizer. It's a product that again is used quite commonly throughout the Midwest and manufactured in Minnesota. And then our control was recommended fertilization rate based on soil test using inorganic fertilizer. In terms of dry matter yields, we find that where we incorporated the microbes in this trial, we had a 19% dry matter yield increase compared to the foliar product and a, almost an 18% yield increase compared to the uh, inorganic fertilizer that was applied, which we used as our control. Okay, so if we look at cost advantages through both the Montana and Nebraska alfalfa trials, we found that we averaged another 600 to 800 pounds of dry matter per acre per cutting, and the value of that alfalfa at that time ranged from $220 to $290 per ton, so that gave us a total advantage incorporating the microbes of somewhere between $78 and $100 an acre. Okay, let's look at oats, barley, and winter pea. Now, in this particular trial in 2011, they had a record snowfall that particular year. They, they're hoping for a lot more snow than they've had this year because their moisture conditions are, are significantly depressed compared to the 2011 time period. But they had about 180% snowfall in the mountains surrounding their ranch in the winter of 2010-2011. And then they had a prolonged winter so they had a late spring warm-up and a late thaw. So when it thawed, all the bottomland flooded along the rivers and so forth. So this field one was a flooded field. And that's why we noted a depressed production in that field for that season. It was flooded after they planted it. Okay, uh, So he, the, the particular rancher here indicated that field one in normal years produces approximately the same tonnage per acre as field two. But again, we had the flooding issues, but you'll see with the flooding issues, we ended up with about a 6% yield increase and about a 40%, a $40 per acre advantage at the half gallon per acre compared to the DRAM and about a $6 per acre advantage with the one gallon per acre compared to the DRAM. In field two, we ended up with right at a 40% yield increase 
and we ended up with anywhere from a 262 to a $126 per acre advantage where we incorporated the microbes. Okay, for this year, at the same location for oats, barley, and winter pea, uh, we, we again saw, uh, you know, some depressed yields in field one and normal yields in field two. We ended up with, but this year he used the Sumagro with a 50% reduction in inorganic fertilizer, and then the control was 100% recommended fertilization, which was 155 pounds per acre of the 35-20-10-5. Now, you'll note that in field one, we ended up with the 50% reduction with about $100 per acre advantage incorporating the microbes with the reduction, and in field two, right at $153 per acre advantage. Other observations that we have made over the last two years on those trials include that we have noted evidence of residual, and what we mean by that is that they plant their oats, barley, and winter pea mix in mid-May, and typically harvest in early to mid-August. And then they immediately go in after harvest and drill in a winter crop. Okay? That winter crop is typically a cocktail mix. Uh, this particular picture that we see up here is a predominantly turnip and cereal rye mix. And what we noted is that all of the sumagro was applied at the beginning of the planting season when he drilled in the oats, barley, and winter pea in mid-May. And he didn't apply any more sumagro after that. And all of this was under pivot. We were going around that where that pivot was, and we noted in, this was two weeks after he had drilled in the cereal rye and the turnips, and we noted that in this particular, in the areas where the sumagro had been applied, we had significantly higher and better germination, particularly with the turnips, and we had exactly double, at that point in time, exactly double the growth in the cereal rye. Uh, so, you know, that, that was at least some uh, anecdotal evidence, observational evidence, that we do see some residual value in the sumagro that's applying to a double crop situation. Additionally, we noted that we had excellent nodule development and root mass where we incorporated the sumagro. The wildlife told us that the bricks was significantly better. When you would go out in the early mornings and the late afternoons, early evenings, all of the deer were congregated in the fields where he had applied the sumagro. And they, there were very few deer in the fields where he had used the other, the control fertilization. So they, in terms of what they preferred to graze, they were migrating towards the sumagro applications. Okay, in Nebraska, we did a trial with native tall grass. This was a mixture of Indian grass, switchgrass, big and little blue stem, with some alfalfa mixed in there, and, and a few other native grass species. We used one gallon per acre of sumagro, four gallons per acre of a foliar feed product as a second treatment, and then our control. What we found in terms of dry matter yields was that comparing the sumagro to the foliar, we had a 14% increase in yield. And comparing the sumagro to the control, we had a 16.5% increase in dry matter yields throughout that growing season. In Louisiana, and this would be in north central Louisiana, we conducted trials, uh, and, and uh, Dusty Taylor was here last year and gave a testimony. You saw some of that on the opening video this morning. And uh, he's gone through two consecutive years of pretty severe summer drought. And, uh, and has noted some definite uh, increase in forage production and forage persistence where he has incorporated the microbes. In the trials there on Dusty's Ranch, we looked at, again, three different treatments. We used one gallon per acre of sumagro, and we applied this in a split application, half a gallon applied in May and another half gallon approximately four weeks later. We compared that with one gallon of sumagro applied, again,